So I don't know about y'all, but I feel like every single year when I try to grow tomato plants in tomato cages like normal, every time I turn around, I get these little spots of blight or these little brown rotted spots on my plants and they just keep wanting to spread and kill every single one of my tomato plants. I've had it. I'm done messing around with blight. This is the year that we are keeping the garden completely blight free. That's what today's video is gonna be about for you guys. I'm gonna share with y'all what I've learned over the years fighting blight and how to keep it out of your garden. Let's go. So first let's talk about what is blight. So you may have also heard before referred to as septoria leaf spot. In short, blight is basically just a, a fungal disease that can occur in tomato plants and a few other plants that can range from either a mild annoyance to totally destroying every single one of your tomato plants. And for some reason, blight is extremely bad where we're at. I think it has to do with the fact that we've got extremely strong winds uh, in our backyard and we have uh, fairly uh, good amounts of rain so it, it kind of creates an ideal environment for blight and it doesn't matter what variety we grow cherry tomatoes beefsteak um, in any variety that we grow we end up getting blight on our tomato plants and blight spreads by fungal spores so it can either transfer through your soil the air or insects and it requires moisture to survive so that's why there's a lot of issues with overhead watering plants and that's why the first thing we're going to talk about is airflow airflow is so so important with tomatoes you don't want to crowd them and however you grow your tomato plants make sure you prune all the leaves that are anywhere near the soil level and just to give you guys a better idea of what i mean so as you can see on this tomato plant this uh we've completely pruned this the whole basically whole for uh first foot of the plant um and overall it's a perfectly healthy looking tomato plant um, there's a little bit of spots on this this will probably be the next sucker we end up uh, pruning off of that but overall completely healthy and just to give you guys uh, a comparison i left uh, this one um, on for a while just so you can see what happens when you end up getting uh, the soil starting to kick up on the plant so as you can see, it's, in, in this situation, it's more than likely being transferred through the soil um, to the leaves. And if I left this, it would eventually just completely go up the plant and it would either severely stunt the growth or it would completely kill it. And actually, we're just going to go ahead and prune that while we're here. And yeah, we'll prune that too. And with tomatoes, you can really, really heavily prune them. Um, you you don't want to obviously take all the leaves off, but you can pretty much take it all the way up. I can actually prune this even a little bit more. Um, as long as you've got three to four sets of leaves on the top to the point where the uh, plant is still going to be able to collect energy from the sun, that's totally fine. So don't be afraid to give your uh, tomato plants a really good pruning. And I'm going to set the camera down just so I can give you guys an idea of how we've got these tied up here. So if you guys can see we've got this plant we literally just have it tied around a nylon string well we don't have it tied but we have it uh, we basically just take the plant and as it grows we keep winding it up and winding it up and we're basically just creating one single stem for this tomato plant you know with with tomato plants if you just let them go they're going to bush out when you're growing them like this and you're pruning them you're literally just going to have one stem that's going to run all the way up and again that's going to help out a ton uh, with airflow and your tomato plant is just going to keep growing up and up and up um, you know some tomato varieties can get up to like 10 feet tall so yeah if you if you grow like this it's literally just going to keep growing and you're just going to keep pruning it up and up and up and you know, you don't have to grow tomato plants like this. There's all different ways, but I would highly recommend something similar to this where your plants have lots of room to climb up um, and no leaves near the soil surface. So this is a really easy and inexpensive way to tie up your tomato plants uh, and keep really good airflow between them. All this is is two T-posts um, per row. So we've got two rows here for uh, T-posts total. And this is just nylon string and you literally just tie the nylon string and you take it down to each side and then you tie string to more string 
and then you take basically just do any kind of uh, like wood uh, stake or you can use bamboo you can even just use uh, the right kind of stick from a yard but you literally just take a piece of wood and we just use zip ties and then you tie a knot underneath the zip tie just to give the string something to attach to at the bottom and you basically just tie them up so this is a again really good easy inexpensive way to basically tie your tomato plants up and I'll put Amazon links for the type of string that I'm using and the T post that I'm using just so you guys can get an idea and check them out. Uh, the string is really nice. It just comes in a box like this. I mean, you can even run your belt through this. You can have it like holstered on your side if you're going to be doing a lot of tying up. And this box will la uh, probably last me like forever. There is a ton of string in here. And this is this stuff's really versatile. You can use it for lots of other stuff in the garden or around the home, which is pretty cool. So again, I'll put Amazon links down for those uh, just so you guys can get an idea. So another thing I found to be really helpful when uh, keeping blight away is mulching. So as you can see, we've just got a little bit of wood mulch on all of our tomato plants. And you don't even have to use a lot, just enough to cover basically the surface area of where you're going to be watering. Again, blight needs moisture to survive. So when you're overhead watering and your uh, water is coming in direct contact with the soil, it's going to be splashing really high up. And that's, again, kind of how that blight gets transferred. So yeah, the wood chips basically just help reduce splash a little bit which again, it, it, it seems small, but it, it does help out a lot keeping the, uh, the moisture in the air down. Some other preventative measures, uh, if you have a flame weeder, you can torch the top of the soil before and after plantings. This will help reduce the amount of bacteria on the soil surface. Also never turn any old tomato leaves back into the soil. Blight can live on dead tomato leaves. So when you're pruning, just make sure you toss them out of the bed. You can also use a baking soda solution on your plant as a preventative measure. Uh, we just use a bottle like this. It has fungicidal properties and it will help reduce the spread of blight. Um, I just use one teaspoon baking soda with about one quart of water, uh, mix in a drop of dish soap to help the solution stick to the leaves, and just basically just spray it all over the entire plant. You can uh, spray it on the stem, leaves, basically just want to coat the entire plant with it. So again, we've been battling blight with our tomato plants for years. Uh, these are the things that have seemed to have helped us out the most. The biggest thing I would say is airflow. If you had to take one thing away from this, make sure you prune them, make sure you uh, tie them up somehow. Even if you have to use a tomato cage, that's fine. Um, just give them some method to grow vertically and make sure you keep those uh, bottom leaves pruned up and keep them off the soil. I hope this gives you guys some hope for dealing with blight. I know it sucks. Um, it, it seems like it's a never ending battle. Again, these things are gonna help out a lot. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I would super appreciate a thumbs up. It'll help this video get out to more beginner gardeners. Also make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We have tons of gardening how-tos, tips, and tutorial videos coming. We do videos at least weekly. So yeah, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. That way you guys never miss when we post a video. Um, again, I'm Nick with Bravo 6 Gardener. Um, let me know what you guys thought of these tips down in the comments section. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on how we set up the, the trellis that we have. Again, the trellis is pretty simple, but I think it's pretty cool. So let me know if you guys want to see a video about that and let me know what you guys thought of these tips. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.